So far, we've looked at patterns where there's a constant difference. In other words, where you add or subtract the same thing to each term to get to the next term. And also we've looked at patterns where there's a common ratio. Those are where you multiply or divide the term, each term, by the same thing to get to the next term. We're now going to look at different patterns, and these are going to be patterns with squares and cubes. A reminder of what squares and cubes are. Squares are like 7 squared. 7 times 7 is 49. Cubes, 4 cubed, 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. Really recommend that you know these squares and cubes that are in this table off by heart. It will help you both now and all the way through in your maths career. Let me show you why it's going to help you now. Imagine we have a pattern that looks like this. If you know your table well, you will look straight away at this pattern, recognize that what you're seeing there is squared, see that t1 is 1 squared, t2 is 2 squared, t3 is 3 squared, and so you'll immediately be able to say that tn is n squared. But let's have a look at some of the features of this pattern. Let me first have a look at the difference. In other words, what does it take to get from there to there, from there to there, from there to there? So if I looked at that difference, what I'm seeing is it's not the same as what we had before where there was a constant difference, but there's definitely a pattern in the difference. So I'm going to look at the difference of the difference and see that from 3 to 5 is a step of 2, 5 to 7, a step of 2, and 7 to 9 is a step of 2. And what I then see is that the second difference is constant. And this is going to be a feature of sequences that have an n squared in their general term. How will this help us? Let me show you. If I'm asked to work out the general term of the sequence and I don't immediately recognize what it is, I can start exploring it by looking at the difference. Let me do that. When I find the difference between each of the terms, what I'm seeing is it's not a constant difference, but there's definitely a pattern in the difference. So let me look at the difference of the difference. And again, here we see that we get a constant second difference. And that immediately alerts me to the fact that my Tn is going to have an n squared in it. So then I can go and compare what I actually have with the n squared, right, with the squared table. And what I can see here is that in each case, what I have is just one less than the n squared. 8 is one less than 3 squared. 3 is one less than 2 squared, right? So whatever's here is just one less than the n squared. So my formula for Tn is n squared minus 1. And there's a bit of a similar story that happens when we deal with cubes. So if you're given this pattern, 1, 8, 27, 64, 1, 2, 5, if you know this table really well, you'll immediately know that what we're dealing with here is a Tn, which is just n cubed. But let's explore the whole different story in this case to see if there's a way we can recognize these cube patterns very easily if we don't immediately see it. So explore the first difference, second difference, etc. here. Um, pause the video, try it now, and then we'll see. So did you see this pattern? Nothing to notice in the first difference, but in the second difference we notice a pattern, and it's in the third difference that we get a constant. So if we're given a pattern and we end up seeing that by the third difference we have a constant, we will know the pattern has a cube in it.